Now, if you're like most people, then you start playing disc golf and after a while, you get to be able to throw about 250 to 300 feet, and then you struggle to throw it farther. Um, maybe you struggle with accuracy or other issues. Um, today, I'm going to explain the most likely reason why you struggle um, to do much better and um, how to fix that. I am a disc golfer. I've been an athlete my whole life. I'm also an experimental scientist. Um, so I use research and experimentation to solve some of the most difficult problems and bring that to um, movements when I play sports. Um, and for the last six months, I've really been focused on why is it that people struggle in the disc golf throw, which brings us to why is it hard for the majority of people to uh, form a good brace when they are throwing the disc? And um, yeah, after studying and experimenting with this for about six months, I have finally found um, the answer. When we ask the question, what is the main problem that people deal with? Um, so people are hitting this topic and getting close to the answer. They're getting very, very close. Um, so for example, in Simon's video, he says that putting your foot down, planting, that's where everything goes right or everything goes wrong. And um, then Joaquin's video, he says planting the foot and how you plant the foot. And you need to have a window and you need to plant the foot perpendicular to the target. And so pros and coaches, teachers there understand that planting the foot is extremely important. This is going to be where the main problem is for people. Um, but the, there's something else that you have to know in order to be able to use what they're trying to tell you. So what is that thing that you need to know in order to be able to apply what they're teaching you? And so when they talk about the plant, the plant foot, um, th and this is just a snapshot, all right? You, they might tell you put it down perpendicular to your target or put it plant with a window between your legs, but that's just a snapshot of a larger movement. Um, what is that larger movement is the question. Um, that larger movement is basically just rotating on your foot. Um, so how do people actually rotate on their foot? It's a simple question, but a very big question. And so if a person is asked to just rotate, take a step, rotate on the foot, how do they do it? Um, your plant foot for, your, for disc golf is probably not going to be a good example, but maybe try it with um, your other foot, your off foot, and see. Um, so do something like this. <clears throat> so just rotate, just step forward and rotate on your foot. How do you do it? How do you do it? What feels natural? Um, and after experimenting with this and looking at people do um, this movement, um, I feel pretty sure that most people, um, when they rotate, are going to do that. They're going to rotate with their weight on the ball of their foot. Um, that is just how people naturally do this movement, the rotating on the foot movement. Um, what does that mean? What's going on when people rotate on the ball of their foot? Let's look at it a bit more. Okay, so when people rotate on the ball of their foot, they're going to step forward, weight on the ball of the foot, of course, stepping forward, weight on the ball of their foot, and what's going on with the back foot? So the back foot is pushing the weight of the body up onto the front foot, up onto the plant foot. 
pushing up onto it to rotate around it. <clears throat> so that's the normal way that people are built to do this movement. There is a big natural tendency to do exactly those things. If you watch videos um, of people trying to tell you how to plant and how to um, do a brace, they're going to tell you that those things are wrong. And they're going to point out things like stepping more um, sideways rather than forward. Um, not pushing your weight up onto your front foot, but keeping your weight behind it. But you have a natural tendency to do those things when you do that rotate on the ball of the foot movement. And so you, <laughs> your natural tendency is going to be to fight against um, those things that people are telling you to do. But is there another way to rotate on your foot? Yeah, there's a whole range, right, from the toe all the way to the heel. You could rotate on the foot. Um, so let's experiment. Experiment with rotating on the heel. Just test it out. Um, let's give it a try. <clears throat> okay. So if I'm going to use my foot I don't normally use, um, I'm going to rotate on the heel. I'm going to have to kind of work this out at first. How does this happen? How do you rotate on the heel? And I work through it to figure it out. And then I get a little faster, a little faster, okay? a little faster until eventually I'm getting pretty comfortable with the movement. See, I've been doing it with my right foot, so that's pretty comfortable already. And so you can experiment with just rotating on the heel of the foot to see um, what happens when you do that. What is it like? What are the physical movements? And let's just take a quick look and see what are the physical movements that are happening when you're rotating on the heel of the foot. Let's check it out. So when we rotate on the heel of the foot, the foot is planting kind of more sideways with that gap between, right? And the front of the foot hits first the toe area. It hits and then the heel hits. Okay. And then the weight goes onto the heel. And as I rotate, I push, I release the back leg. So it goes like this, 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 and release as I rotate. So basically, there are three steps front of the foot hits, heel. Weight shifts to the heel, the back leg goes out. And so it's like some pretty simple basic steps that I see happening when I rotate on my heel. And you should notice already, that these steps are things that disc golf coaches and pros are trying to get you to do. But if you have that built-in rotate on the ball of the foot movement happening, and you try to do those changes without learning to rotate on the heel, what's going to happen? You're going to be extremely frustrated, um, you might not actually ever achieve those things if you don't eventually switch over to rotating more on the heel. And you could also injure yourself as well. Um, I twisted my ankle several times because I was just so stubborn trying to um, brace 
while rotating on the ball of my foot. But once I started rotating on the heel, um, it was easy. It became natural um, to do those things to keep my weight behind um, my, my plant foot and to brace properly. And again, those things just came naturally because I practiced just rotating on my heel um, in like my office or at home, I would just practice. And it didn't take that long. It took, I don't know, maybe two weeks before I could really um, put this into my disc golf throw. And I saw just immediate huge improvements um, you'll also notice a few other things if you keep rotating on your heel and um, start doing it harder, faster. Um, you'll see some other things happening. Like, like check it out. <clears throat> you notice what's going on with my left shoulder when I'm when I'm starting to try to do this harder and faster, what's happening? You see how my shoulder is going up and back like this, and then it's coming down to help me to rotate faster. That's what pros do, right? When they go back, their shoulder and arm will be coming up and then it's going to go down just before they come through with the disc, right? I found that um, that movement is simply a natural movement of trying to rotate faster on my heel. I just, just naturally did it. So <laughs> learning to rotate on the heel um, is going to impact everything and help you to do a lot of those things naturally that you maybe have been trying to force yourself to do. Um, yeah, in my own experience, as I've been incorporating that rotation on the heel into my throw, all those things have gotten easier. I've gotten so much better and uh, able to throw much, much farther now with much less effort um, than I did before. So. I think this is really going to help out a lot of people. Um, good luck out there. Stay safe. And let me know if you have any questions or if uh, there are any other topics that you'd like me to talk about with the backhand or the forehand. Good luck.